Hey folks, Tony Lockhart here and in this video uh, we're just going to go over a little bit of process with how to do some background sketching. This video is going to have a little bit different of an approach than the last video. Okay. Uh, no matter what, I always start out with some kind of a grid because it helps me map things out. So there's my grid, probably going to take the opacity and drop it down. So that way it's not too distracting. And then I could start to go and sketch things out, okay? Again, little different approach than the last video, but uh, pretty same, similar concepts. Okay, so now that I've got my grid and I know how to make some depth happen, I'm just gonna go and get a nice brush and let me come up with some kind of a foreground element. And I'm gonna draw a little cliff, that's right here. And maybe I'll put in other visual elements all cacti and stuff like that um, you know plants and things like that that are in the foreground you know put some rocks and things like that and looking pretty good uh, if I turn on my camera mask then um, you can kind of get an idea of what's not going to show okay so now that that's um, all set maybe what I'm going to do is probably put a little tiny boat on the water right there and as I move farther up the composition, what's gonna happen is, is it's gonna look farther away. So maybe I could put a little bit tinier of a boat farther away and it's just gonna be a little tiny blob. Okay, next what I wanna do is to come in with some kind of a zigzaggy type shape. And what that's gonna emulate is what the coastline is gonna look like. That's gonna be far in the distance. Okay, the reason it's going to look like the coastline and far in the distance is because what I've done is I've put in some kind of a, I've put in some kind of a line that's higher up on the composition. Okay, go ahead and sketch this and I'm just trying to map out the basic shapes and I'm trying to think about, okay, where am I going to put all this stuff? Okay, a little bit farther up in the composition, let's go and create another visual right there. So here's a, kind of another big portion of mountain. Now that I see this, I'm gonna drop this down just a bit so that way it emulates the idea of more depth or gives me the idea of more depth. Give it you for scale purposes. I think we're looking good. Okay, maybe I'm gonna put a city right here that's tucked away overlooking the ocean. Okay, next. I'm going to continue this sketch with the city um, kind of tucked in there and I think I can go and draw the rest of the stuff that's in the background. Okay, let's get those rolling hills way in the back. I don't want to tangent anything like this where the bottom arc touches the top of the city. It's going to look weird. So instead I just want to very I want to be cognizant of what I'm doing and I really want to make sure that I'm you know making stuff and putting stuff and composing it, you know, in a direction, in a place that I want it to, okay? So now that that's all set up, I think I got a pretty solid um, thumbnail sketch. Let's get some clouds in there as well. Okay, and I think I'm all set. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and select the ink brush, and I'm gonna think about different layers, and I can just roll the mouse wheel up, and kind of zoom in. Okay, so in the furthest or furthest back layer, what I'll do is I'm gonna choose a nice light value with the ink brush and I'll go and sketch in the cloud, make it a little bit more cloudy-like. And I'll just continue, make that sketch come to life. Okay, I'm not gonna really fill anything because you know there's no point. Might give it a little bit of value underneath or shading with some hatching. So that way it gives the impression that these clouds have volume, but yeah, that's good enough. I'm not really trying to do a finish uh, perfect drawing. Okay, next, since I know that that's the color I got, I'm gonna go with a new layer. I'm gonna go a little bit darker. And what I wanna do is to try to make these mountains come to life. So again, I'm gonna sketch them. I'm not gonna really fill anything in this pass. If I wanted to, I could always use the paint bucket. Um, but you know, I'm just trying to sketch things out. And as I get a little bit lower in the composition, which is also closer to camera, I'm gonna get progressively darker. On this layer, I'm gonna actually go a little bit darker and let's get those rolling hills in there too. 
um, because I don't really need to separate all of this stuff out. Um, if I want to, I can come up with some shadows that are, you know, on top of these rolling hills. Um, yeah, that's probably good. Remember, that this is just a rough sketch. Okay, so now let me get another layer. So again, I'm going to go for a vector layer. I like vector layers because I can make adjustments to them um, after the fact, um, especially if I scale things up or down. Okay, so a little bit darker, a little bit closer, a little bit more detail because, you know, with con uh, contrast happens a lot more. Um, it's a lot uh, stronger contrast as you get closer, you know, to the front of the composition. So I can risk things and I can make things a little bit darker. Anyways. It's my sketch for the background. Let's go, and I don't, I'm not really too worried about making all of these buildings super detailed because uh, I'm not trying to do a comp, I'm just trying to do a quick thumbnail sketch. Okay, get a little bit more detailed and try to, try to sculpt out this mountain just a little bit more. And one of the things I like to do at this stage of the game is to turn off the sketch underneath just to get an idea of how my drawing is going to stand on its own. Um, so I'm just going to turn that on and off. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to continue and just make the rest of that happen. And um, I'd, like to I'd like to end this video. It's getting pretty long, so instead I'm just going to just quickly blast through this and then we should be done. So now let me go a little bit darker, go a little bit closer, a little bit more details. Maybe I could start making trees and other types of foliage. I can make a cathedral or church or something like that or a lighthouse right there. And that's kind of it, okay? Um, as we end this video, I think it's important to note that you're going to have less contrast in your backgrounds the farther away things are. The closer you get to the camera, the, the more contrast, meaning you're going to have dark colors against light colors and things that are super bright versus things that are super dim. It's going to be a lot more noticeable. Stuff that's farther away from the camera is going to look pretty much the same. Like the colors, they just kind of blend together. The values, as in the lightness and darkness of everything, that just blends together as well as you get uh, farther away from the camera because, you know, it's just, it's so far away and the way the atmosphere causes light to bounce against things, it just looks different. Okay? All right, guys. I uh, hope that was a helpful video. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks.